What's up guys, Ocrafter here. Today I want to present an in-depth guide to CQC in Hideo Kojima's game Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain. This video will cover everything from the most basic to the most advanced form of CQC and also a few CQC related tactics. Let's get straight into it and see if we learn anything new. Let's start with the basic grab. To perform this we simply sneak up on an unsuspecting enemy Press and hold the CQC button. Now we have a few options available to us. First, the drag maneuver. By walking in any direction, this allows us to drag the enemy. This is slow, but we can still control the camera. It can be done while standing or crouching. Alternatively, we can press and hold the aim button and release the CQC button. This allows for more rapid movement and self-defense, but limits the view to the boss's peripheral vision. To return to the grab position, Release the aim button and immediately press and hold the CQC button again. Now let's look at interrogations. By pressing and holding the L1 or LB button, we open a dialogue menu. From here we can question the enemy. We can ask him to spit it out or wear the rest. Spit it out will reveal the location of something useful in the area, and wear the rest will reveal some nearby enemies on the map. Generally, they only answer one question, so try to mix it up. Now let's look at some options for incapacitating the enemy. A. The long strangle. From the grab position, release the CQC button and then immediately press and hold it again. Note that when an enemy has been strangled like this, he will remain unconscious for roughly the same duration as a tranquilizer dart. Now B. The fast strangle. From the grab position, we release CQC button and then quickly press it again, but instead of holding it, Keep pressing it rapidly. This is much faster, but carries a penalty. The enemy will not stay unconscious for quite as long. Now let's look at C, the throat slash. From the grab position, we simply press the action button to have boss stab the enemy in the throat. The player should note that this is fatal, and you will lose your no-kills bonus. Once you've incapacitated an enemy, it's always a good idea to hide the body. Press and hold the interact button to have boss pick up the enemy. You can hide bodies in toilets or dumpsters located around the game world by pressing the interact button. It can be removed again also by pressing the interact button. There won't always be a toilet or dumpster available to you, so you can also hide bodies in long grass. Note how well camouflaged the soldier is. This can benefit the boss as well. By going prone in long grass, you become virtually invisible. Another option available from a grab is a troll. Let's look at these now. The first one I want to talk about is the forward face plant. This knocks the enemy out on the spot where he is standing and keeps boss facing forwards. It is done by releasing the CQC button and then immediately tapping it again while simultaneously tapping up on the directional control. Not how boss is still facing the same way as before the throw. The enemy will remain unconscious for around 45 seconds before waking up and initiating a search. So let's look at the rear slam. This is useful if you are planning on going back the way you came, or if you think that perhaps there is danger behind you and you need to turn around fast. It is done by releasing the CQC button and then immediately tapping it again while simultaneously tapping down on the directional control. Note how boss has turned 180 degrees. Again, the enemy will remain unconscious for about 45 seconds. Another variation of the throw from grab is the wall damage throw. This is performed by releasing the CQC button and then quickly tapping it again while simultaneously tapping the directional controls towards a wall or solid object. Players should note that adding wall damage to a troll increases the duration of the knockout considerably. For this section I want to talk about free throws. The first one, the hip throw, is done by advancing towards an enemy and tapping the CQC button. You can do this mid-stride as directional controls are not needed. Next we have the half suplex. To do this, advance towards an enemy and when you are within range, release the directional controls for a split second before sharply tapping the CQC button and down on the directional controls. 
control to get her. That brings us to wall damage. This is achieved by releasing the directional controls for a split second before quickly tapping the CQC button while simultaneously tapping the directional controls towards a wall or solid object. The first few throws give a stun status of around 45 seconds. The wall damage throw increases the KO duration substantially. That brings us to the emergency throw. This is useful in an emergency situation where you need to move fast. Perhaps an enemy is advancing on you searching for you from behind and another enemy is blocking your path. Players should note that this throw will use your reflex bonus. To do this, we simply sprint past the enemy towards where we want to go. And after passing the enemy, tap the CQC button. The reason we pass the enemy first is because free throws always make boss turn 180 degrees. The point of this throw is to continue in the direction we were running. This allows us to be on our way quickly. Now, for the end of the free throw section, I want to talk about the disposal throw. This is used for quickly getting a body out of sight. It can be done by tapping the CQC button while carrying an enemy. Players should note that the distance of the throw is affected by the speed at which you are moving. Throwing an enemy from a height will likely kill them, and throwing a sleeping enemy will change their status from sleeping to stun. In this section, I'm going to talk about AI and environmental manipulation. First, let's talk about using the enemy's hearing against them. We have two ways to do this. The empty mag from the support weapons menu, and the knock function which we can access with the L1 or LB button. Let's talk about the empty mag. This is your way of telling the enemy, go there. After selecting the mag from the support weapons menu, we hold aim and choose where we want the enemy to go. When we're satisfied with the location, we throw the mag using the fire button. On hearing the noise, the enemy becomes suspicious and starts to make his way towards the location of the sound. We can use this time to sneak past him or sneak up on him and use one of the techniques we saw earlier. Now let's look at the knock function. This is your way of telling the enemy, come here, and we'll lure the enemy towards your location. Select knock from the L1 or LB button and activate it. Now that we have his attention, that brings us to using the environment. Let's look at a wall takedown. We simply wait until the enemy is within range and give one fast tap of the CQC button. Take note that the sound from this attack could potentially alert other guards in the area. This will KO an enemy for 45 seconds. Players should also know that when the enemy wakes up from this KO, he will call to the others that something is wrong. While this is not an official alert phase, enemies in the area do become more active with heightened senses. So you should be sure to be long gone before that happens and things become trickier. Most environmental takedowns have two methods. So next, let's take a look at the second variation of the wall takedown. Players should note that this can be done while standing or crouching. It doesn't matter as long as you are in cover. This time, when the enemy is within range, we're going to press and hold the CQC button to perform a wall grab. After grabbing the enemy, have all the abilities we saw earlier available to us. But for now, let's just strangle him and move on. I want to give a quick tip about traversal. In an area with walls or rocky terrain, we can hold the action button down while we move. The boss will automatically climb over any obstacles. This is especially useful on bad terrain, where you often get snagged on something that a normal person would simply step over. Holding the action button will cause boss to simply step over. Watchtower sentries have excellent vision due to the elevated vantage point. But if we can get behind one, they are easy to eliminate. We can just climb the ladder and from the second or top rung, tap the CQC button. This will KO the sentry for about 90 seconds. But for now, let's wake him up, strangle him, so he doesn't interrupt the rest of our tutorial. No, 
Oh, onto windows. Windows are especially useful in hostage rescue. For example, we managed to get inside a hostage building, but a guard is blocking the door. Pick up the hostage and proceed towards a window. A tap of the CQC button will throw the hostage through. A tap of the action button, the boss will climb through. Now we can pick up our hostage and be on our way. Note that throwing a hostage from an upstairs window will kill him and it is therefore inadvisable. Throughout the game world there are many destructible assets such as boxes, chairs, tables, beds, glass windows. Throwing an enemy through these does not apply the wall damage bonus but it sure is fun. This can also be done from a grab throw or a free throw. Finally, to wrap up environmental manipulation, I'm going to talk about low barrier takedown. You may creep up on a guard near a low barrier, or perhaps you lured him there. Like the wall takedown, you have two options. Option A, press and hold the CQC button to grab the enemy and access the grab ability we saw earlier. Option B, tap the CQC button once to perform a rapid knockout. The effects of this will last approximately 45 seconds. In the next section, we're going to move on to look at some holdups. The first type of holdup is to simply aim your weapon at the enemy and advance on his position. Once the holdup is initiated, you hold L1 or LB button to open a dialog menu and see a third option has appeared. On the ground. Selecting this will order the enemy to get face down on the ground. The second type of holdup is called a disarm holdup and it is by far the coolest. For now, let's just look at it and I'll go into greater detail about it later as I feel it falls under a different category. Pretty awesome though, right? The third type of hold up is the hold up from a grab position. To do this, sneak behind an enemy and grab him. Now that we've grabbed him, we're free to drag him away from prying eyes. And when we are satisfied that the coast is clear and it is safe to do so, we release him. Give him a chance to stand up and then aim your weapon at him to begin the hold up. Player should be aware that once an enemy has been told to get down, he is permanently neutralized and won't get up again except in two scenarios. A. You set off a combat alert, in which case all enemies you held up will get back up and join the fight. Or B. Another enemy finds him and tells him to get up. The fourth type of hold up is the hold up from a throw. This is useful if we feel another enemy could see us and a lower profile would be better. It can also be used if we do not have the interpreter for the enemy's language and he doesn't understand the get down command. To perform this we throw the enemy to the ground, kick him to wake him up and then immediately aim at him. possible to hold up two enemies at once, but I don't feel this counts as a different type of hold up as we are still only using the same approach as we've seen previously, but it is useful so I'll demonstrate it anyway. Here it is. It can also vary the type of holdups used to perform the double. Let's try it using a grab and a weapon point. This can be useful if we need to abduct the target or want to incapacitate the other. First we grab the target we intend to abduct. Then we hold the aim button to initiate the holdup on the other guy. Now that we've done this, the situation is relaxed. 
we can incapacitate the other guy at our own discretion. Be on our way with the target. This is the fifth and final type of hold up. It is a hold up using a distraction. To do this, we must first manipulate the enemy into walking past our location. Let's try it using the empty mag. Now we just wait for him to pass us, and then we aim at the enemy to initiate the hold up. Heads up. Easy. we just saw was the enemy thinking he is fast enough to catch us off guard with his knife. There are three ways to know this is coming, and I am going to explain that next. So we perform a hold up and press L1 or LB to open the dialog menu, but no options appear. This is the first sign that the enemy is going to try and knife us. The second sign is the sound of the knife being unsheathed. Here is a screenshot of what to watch for when we open the dialog menu. As you can see, there are no dialogue options. It's at this stage we should let go of the aim button and be ready for the attack. The third sign is the enemy's hand. As soon as we initiate the hold up, he almost immediately begins to lower his hands towards his knife. Again, we will hear the knife being drawn a split second before the attack happens. To counter this, we wait for the enemy to make his move, and then we hit the CQC button, one fast tap. If you're in a rush, you see that there's no dialogue option, you could just quickly grab the enemy, and this will negate his attack also. Now that we've encountered melee based CQC in our tutorial, it's time to talk about the disarm holder. To do this, you approach the enemy and release the directional controls completely, and then tap the CQC button. This will perform a single punch. After throwing the punch, press and hold the aim button. The boss will now spin the enemy around and take his weapon from him before pointing it at him. We can throw two punches before holding the aim button if we like. When we release the aim button, the boss will drop the enemy's weapon. I'd like to share one last tip. While we are behind the enemy, he can't see us, so we can do as we like, and he won't react. But from the front, it is a different story. While the enemy can see us, and we are not holding a gun on him, he will try to get the drop on us. He will begin to slowly reach for the pistol on his right hip. We can stop this by simply aiming at him, and he will raise his hands again. Let's look at that again. We can clearly see him reach for the pistol holster on his right hip. That concludes the hold up section of our tutorial and brings us to my favourite aspect of the game. Full on melee close quarters combat. To start off the melee CQC tutorial, let's first look at the most basic of the moves, the pimp hand. To perform this, we advance towards an enemy and as we get near, we break into a sprint. Once in range, we tap the CQC button. This allows us to dispatch an enemy quickly and be on our way. Let's look at the three punch combo. This is done by approaching an enemy from behind and rapidly pressing the CQC button three times without moving the directional controls in any direction. Note that the enemy is rendered unconscious almost exactly where he stood. The effects of this KO last much longer than even a trank round, possibly permanently, except if another enemy finds him and wakes him up. Now we'll look at the 5 to 7 hit combo. This is performed from the front of an enemy by pressing the CQC button 5 times without touching the directional controls. Note that the enemy moved a fair distance from where the attack started. This makes it useful as a method of moving an enemy behind cover and leaving them KO'd at the end of it. Again, the effects of this KO last a lot longer than even a trank round. Again, possibly permanently, except if another enemy finds him and wakes him up. Let's look at these again. The three hit combo. A punch to the left side of the head, turn the enemy slightly to the right, Kick to the back of the left knee while pulling the enemy's right shoulder to unbalance and turn him, and a devastating right cross to the exposed jaw. Lights fucking out. The 
five hit combo and open palm smack to the head with the metal hand to knock him back. A right hook to the enemy's left ribs to wind him and knock him further back and expose his right side. A kick to the back of his right knee, a chop to the enemy's left wrist to negate any hope of defending himself and a crack to the left of his jaw. All over. The punch really is the key to transitioning between CQC manoeuvres. In this section I'm going to explore transitions and recap some of the moves we've learned. The first transition is from a punch combo to a hold up. This is done by pressing and holding aim instead of striking the final blow of the combo. From the hold up we can release aim, strike another punch, and as the enemy staggers back we can transition into a grab by pressing and holding the CQC button. The grab allows us to transition into a drag. Remember, there are two types of drag. The free camera, slow drag, or the faster, self-defense drag with limited view. Alternatively, there was the interrogation by holding L1 or LB. Remember to mix up your questions. And finally, there was the throw. Done by pressing the directional controls up or down as we tap the CQC button. Now let's use the punch to stagger the enemy back, and we transition into another form of hold-up. From this hold-up, let's use the punch to stagger the enemy towards an object, so we can transition into a wall damage throw. Done by tapping the directional controls towards a wall or solid object and tapping the CQC button at the same time. By using a single punch, done by tapping the CQC button once, we cause an enemy with his back to us to turn and face us. Also, if an enemy is facing us, a single punch can stop a reflex mode and leave the enemy open to any of the moves that we've learned. Note that you can repeatedly strike an enemy as long as the final blow of the combo is not struck. However, repeated blows will eventually render him unconscious, and if you continue, you will eventually beat him to death. That pretty much ends our tutorial. I'd like to thank our volunteer here, as none of this has been possible without him. And I think it's high time we put him out of his misery. I hope this was of some benefit for people who are new to the series or are unfamiliar with the CQC, and that everybody is enjoying the game after such a long wait. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you all at your FOBs. Till next time, take care of yourselves, and each other.